Hi everyone. As we all know, flat earthers are fond of repeating the same claims over and over and over, no matter how many times they're debunked. In this series, I want to go over them one by one. This is Flurf Pratt. Flat Earth points refuted a thousand times. To make sure you don't miss anything, subscribe and hit the bell. This time I want to address the claim that we have all been indoctrinated into believing that the Earth is round and that if we could only think freely, we would immediately realize that the Earth is in fact flat. Respond to any claim a flat earther makes, and the second he realizes that you're not completely ignorant of literally everything, he'll say, that's just the excuse you've been taught to recite, and dismiss anything you say without a second thought. And of course, you won't see the irony. Everything flurfs say that supposedly proves that the Earth is flat is a point they've been taught to recite without thinking, as clearly evidenced by the fact that they never correct their arguments when they are refuted. Even if you still believe the conclusion of your argument is true, if a flaw in the argument is made clear to you and you realize that the argument simply isn't working, then if you care about convincing anyone, you correct it. But flat earthers don't. Insert supposed proof here is supposed to be absolute proof that the earth is flat. So even if you carefully explain what's wrong with it, they will still keep repeating the same failed proof as a mantra, even later on in the same conversation. Nothing you say will get through to them, and that is exactly what you'd expect when dealing with a person who has been indoctrinated. Now, granted, the whole flat earth thing is still relatively new, so I don't think that most flurfs have been indoctrinated with that particular belief. But judging from their insistence that round earthers have been indoctrinated, they do seem to have been the victims of indoctrination. To the exclusion of education. That's why they can't tell the difference between the two. Anyone who is educated is considered to be a victim of indoctrination, so anything they say can be dismissed. What I mean is that while they may not have been indoctrinated with the belief that the Earth is flat, they have clearly been taught what to think as opposed to how to think. They've been taught a set of supposed facts, not a method by which to predict, discover and evaluate facts for themselves. Then they go online and find that what they've been taught isn't all there's to it. There's other information out there, and some of it contradicts what they were taught. They're now forced to evaluate information, to determine which of two contradictory claims is true, if either. But they don't have the right tools for the job. Again, they haven't been taught how to think. If they had, they couldn't have been indoctrinated with, presumably, fundamentalist Christianity to begin with. Instead, they end up believing that critical thinking means rejecting whatever you were taught by any sort of established authority, with the possible exception of an absolutely literal interpretation of the Bible. Stop writing that comment. They consider the Bible to be an authority. To them, the difference between thinking freely and being an indoctrinated sheep is where the information comes from, not whether it checks out. Because they don't know how to determine if it checks out. If it comes from any kind of respected authority, it's what they want you to believe, for entirely malicious reasons. It's a conspiracy, it's a lie, and as such, it can be dismissed without consideration. On the other hand, if it comes from someone who argues against the mainstream position, then it is the truth they don't want you to know. Such truth is accepted as, you guessed it, dogma. And all of my experience dealing with Flat Earthers tells me that they actually think this is how the rest of us think as well. We're just on the other side. We blindly accept what they tell us instead of blindly rejecting it. I suspect that in school their teachers, who were no doubt often their own uneducated parents, merely taught them to memorize facts. If they recited the facts or supposed facts correctly on the test, they passed. This is not representative of how science education works. In fact, it's exactly how religious dogma is taught. And as a science teacher, I find it absolutely unacceptable that science is taught that way as well in some parts of the world, including at least some parts of the US, where a question on a test might be, how old is the Earth? Of course, expecting the answer 6,000 years, rather than explain how the age of the Earth can be determined experimentally. Even at the elementary school level, the most important thing that should be taught in science class is the scientific method. Science is a method of investigation, not a set of facts. 
memorizing facts isn't really important. You can always look them up when you need them. You only memorize for the sake of convenience. What good science education is focused on is the process by which facts are predicted, discovered, and evaluated. What to think is secondary. What to think will change as science moves forward. What matters is how to think, specifically how to predict, discover, and evaluate facts for yourself. Another good example is the difference between asking, does ice float in liquid water? A question calling for a simple and easily memorized yes or no, and what portion of an ice cube will be submerged if placed in water? A question that calls for students to use their knowledge of physics to work out the fact that is asked for. The students have not been taught the answer beforehand. They've been taught Archimedes' principle, which states that the force of buoyancy on a body submerged in a fluid is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. With this knowledge and a table that includes the densities of ice and water, they can work out the answer. They're not being trained to recite facts, but to use a theoretical model to make a prediction about an empirical result. This can then be tested by actually taking an ice cube and putting it in a glass of water and actually checking how much of it ends up below the surface. I think this is one of the most common misunderstandings of how experiments are used in science. Yes, sometimes scientists perform experiments just to see what happens, but the most important use of experiments in science is to test hypotheses. This is done by theoretically predicting the outcome beforehand, and then using the experiment to check if the prediction was correct. Theoretical models that make accurate predictions are useful and are kept. Models that don't make accurate predictions are discarded, or at least modified. You'll notice that flurfs typically don't care about what predictions their models make, if they even bother making models in the first place. For example, if the Earth is flat, then you should be able to see across the Atlantic, which of course you can't, but they don't care about that. That's because they don't understand the importance of models having predictive power. That in practice, the only truth about how nature functions that we can know is the pragmatic kind. What works is tentatively accepted as true. What doesn't work is definitely false. Of course, even at the college level, every experiment students are asked to carry out has been done countless times and the results are well known. The theories being used to predict the results are well established. The purpose of the experiments isn't really to test the theories, but to teach students about experimental work and to show the students that the theories they're being taught do hold up when tested experimentally. Not because this isn't known, period, but because it may not be known to the students. And the best part is that they are shown by doing the experiments themselves, ruling out the possibility that they are being misled. Now, if facts A and B can be shown to hold up, and A and B implies E, do I not have good reason to accept E? I would say I do. Now, if C and D implies F, and both C and D can be shown to hold up reasonably, so should F. Now, let's say that E and F implies G, G should also hold up. By now, however, I've gone pretty far from what I've actually tested, but if I test G and see that it also holds up, does that not lend credence to the untested E and F? Yes, it does. It doesn't prove them absolutely, but that's not what science is about. By testing parts of a larger framework, students are shown perhaps not that every detail is accurate, but that the framework as a whole is accurate, in that it makes useful, accurate predictions. Everyone doesn't have to test everything, because facts do not exist in a vacuum. Facts relate to each other. If you simply memorize them without understanding the structure, the point is lost. If you have simply been told, not shown, that A, B, C, D, E, F, and G are true, you have not understood how these relate. You've been taught to recite, not to explore, predict, and evaluate. But what's more, since you have no idea what the framework looks like, you won't be able to tell how a new piece of information fits into it. It's easy to dismiss, say, C, if you are told, again, told, not shown, that X contradicts it, especially if an interesting narrative is presented that supposedly explain why you should believe X over C. But what are the consequences? What happens to F? What happens to G? 
the person who understands how the facts relate can say with confidence that X simply doesn't fit in. C predicts F, which predicts G. If we can't make these predictions with X, the empirical fact that G has been demonstrated is a strong indicator that it is not C that's wrong. It's X, even if we hadn't demonstrated C directly. But to a flat earther, C is just one of those points of dogma that we have been taught to recite without thinking. Just as X is to them. The Earth being flat is one of those things that simply don't fit in. Not only does it contradict direct observations, it also can't be made to fit into the frameworks of physics, astronomy, or geology, or geography for that matter. The Earth simply isn't flat. It's a sphere, and this has been known for at least 2,500 years. If science education was just indoctrination, then science wouldn't work. It would lose its predictive power and thus also its usefulness. Science couldn't tell us anything new. It could only ever tell us what we already accept as true. And it wouldn't be able to evaluate that. Flat Earthers, whoever taught you science lied to you or had no idea what they were talking about. That's not how science works, and it's not how science education works. But of course, that's just another one of those excuses I've been taught to recite without thinking. Isn't it? See ya.